her boxing acumen what brought her to be the first qualified U.S. fighter for the 2012 Olympics. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Dort Financial Center here in Flint, Michigan. As we are live across the world on pay-per-view for this historic night of women's boxing. Brought to you by Salida Promotions and sponsored by Bet Online and Veggie. We begin the evening six rounds this in the Bantamweight Division and is presented in association with King's Promotions and Golden Boy Promotions. Your three judges scoring this Bantamweight contest that ringside will be Katilia Chambers, David DeYoung, and a Pat Schmidt. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds is Ansel Stewart. Introducing first, fighting to my left out of the red corner. She comes in wearing the black and gold, weighing in officially at already 119 pounds. Her record, four wins, three losses, two draws. Originally from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, now fighting out of Chicago, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Shelly Barnett. And across the ring, her opponent fighting out of the blue corner. She comes in wearing the black and pink, weighing in officially at 117 and one quarter pounds. Her record, an impressive one. Eight wins, one of those coming by way of knockout against one defeat, fighting out of Houston, Texas. She is an Olympic bronze medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marlene Esparza. And your referee in charge here to give instructions, Ansel Stewart. Okay, boxers, you receive your instruction in the dressing room. I need a good, clean, professional fight. Touch them up. Let's go at the belt. Marlon Esparza, Shelly Barnett, ready to roll here as we get started with our pay-per-view here in Flint, Michigan at the Dort Federal Credit Union Event Center. Capacity of 4,421, 375 allowed in due to COVID-19 safety protocols. I sound a lot louder that than, than that, though. Yes. There's a lot of environment here. Very happy to be here. And uh, if uh, Coach James Cooper had mentioned that he wanted Sparza to start slow, uh, I don't think that was the fight plan. I think they were just giving us something because Marlene came out Guns blazing. I think they wanted to see us if we were on our toes, ready to roll. Esparza, black and pink trunks. Shelly Barnett in the black and gold. Esparza, victorious in a WBC flyway eliminator that was a, a lot closer than the scorecards would suggest her last time out back in late October against Sulem Urbina. But she, I don't think there was any question. There was little debate that she did come away as the victor. But she did give away, I'd say, the first four or five rounds. And that would cost her. And against somebody like Barnett, definitely not a good option because, again, we mentioned it before, she just keeps coming forward, relentless. She can take the abuse and keep ticking. Shelly Barnett last fought on January 28th of 2020. It was in Toronto. She was outclassed by Mississauga as Amanda Galay over six rounds, and Galay came out guns blazing. We talk about machine gun Shelly Galay through. 113 punches in the round at Barnett. She landed 56, according mm -hmm. to the CompuBox stats. Barnett landed 44 the entire fight. Exactly. <laughs> and when we talk, when we speak to Ewan Jackson, her trainer, that that's one of the points that we we need we wanted to look at today: production. And I think she's a little too slow again, especially with somebody like Sparsa, who's came in, no joke. She's really being very active compared to the fight against Urbina. Two minute rounds in women's boxing and we are done with round number one. Shelly Barnett saying just met, you know, mentally it wasn't her night there, but mm -hmm. I think for as impressive of a performance it was by Galay, it was nearly as impressive at the punishment Barnett was taking. And, and you know, this, this isn't hyperbole here. She 
was right in front of her the entire time, yes. munching on everything, it's and did not wither one bit. Lunch, breakfast, dinner, everything was served. She landed on her end, only 14%. And this, in the long run, could be a big problem because the higher level of opponent, the competition gets tougher, i.e. Marlene Sparza, that's not going to spare her at all. And she will punish her. How long can you actually survive in boxing with that type of uh, fight style? Here we go with round number two between Esparza and Barnett. And this was a fight even before that loss to Galea that Barnett said she wanted. She mentioned specifically Marlena Esparza's name, even though they are in, in different weight classes. You know, she said she's always thought highly of her. She's always wanted a fighter, even from coming up as an amateur. And she took this fight on eight days' notice. Mm -hmm. And the reason why she took it was because she wanted to fight Marlene. She admires Marlene. She also knows that Marlene has a, a title opportunity coming up. Yes, and that would be against Zamora. That fight is to be scheduled by April. And this is an opportunity that any female fighter wants to have. Sparza trying to work multiple jabs here in round number two. And you can tell she has been able to slow things down inside that ring. She, she nodded in approval of her coach James Cooper's advice. To slow things down, yes, because yeah. that's a tough pace, especially with somebody like uh, uh, Shelly that can take the type of punishment and maybe not dish it, but can you really maintain that tempo? One of the things that I brought up was the fact that she did not use the jab. That's an easy setup to start using and throwing and loosening up your arms and, you know, set up the combinations. And once again, the jab's not there. Comes away with a left hand to the body out of the clench and a right uppercut to the stomach of Barnett there as time winds down here and Round number two. Good action out of the clinch in round two by Marlena Sparza. One of the things that I admire from uh, Marlene is because of her boxing acumen and the type of experience that she had both nationally and internationally, she, she has acquired that ability to make very small adjustments that make a big difference. I want you to observe in the next round the lateral movements. They're not big or wide. They're just very tiny. Here of our pay-per-view event in Flint, Michigan, as Sparza and Barnett. The main event, of course, Clarice Shields against Mariev Decare. Unification opportunity at 154 pounds. It's the first of four matches here on our main card. Jamie Mitchell, Noemi Vasquez coming up next. And a heavyweight battle between Danielle Perkins and Monika Harrison. There you see it as we get busy here in round number three. And now Barnett means business. She's finally letting those arms go. Good solid defense. Those elbows going down. Esparza doubling up with the left hand. And they're still working at close range. Here's the jab that you wanted, Claudia. Yes. At least one of them. Lost art. But if you want to go up in level of opponents, definitely the jab. It's a lost art, but the great ones use them mm -hmm. to perfection. Right now with a combo right hand, left uppercut, counter from Esparza. Esparza looking for that left hook. Both 
connect momentarily with a uppercut. See that small head movement, very slight movement that makes big differences in defense. Good combo right cross from Esparza. Esparza keeping her body lower. She's baiting Barnett. She's baiting Barnett to come in so she can use her hooks. She's taking the bait here. Yeah, she is. Overhand right. And another from Esparza. And that is not a knockdown as things wind down here in round number three. Barnett coming forward, losing her footing. But Esparza, after a nice flurry in the opening moments there, finding a way to dictate the action in the third round. Well, if there was any critique coming from that fight against uh, Tenez Estrada. Today, she's showing us a lot of composure. Even though there was a fast beginning, she slowed down things. She's now sitting into her punches. She's setting things up. I really like that head movement. I want to see more of that. I think you could really circle those last two matches that she had. Obviously, you know, you have the adversity of a loss, the first yes, loss. Yes, yes. And, 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 and a cut, a yes. very important cut that she, creates awareness in a fighter. She experienced a, a headbutt for the first time. Mm -hmm. and, and then having to deal with it, and that all came in defeat for the first time in her pro career against Estrada. And against somebody that she had, like, a personal vendetta. Like, she wanted to get this done. She bounced back well against Urbina. Now going for a second straight win here against Shelly Barnett. And things carrying over from round number three for Marlena Esparza. Barnett is not getting hit. With, well, uh, there's a nice one, a nice left hooks. hand, and now tripling up, yep. quadrupling the right hand is Esparza. I was saying Barnett wasn't getting hit with as many punches as she was in that fight against Galay, but she's not throwing any additional punches we go back. In, that, in that fight. And when we talk to Ewan Jackson, that's the one thing they were looking to change, and they worked for that on this fight. Then again, they only got 10 day notice. A nice uppercut followed by a left hook and another left uppercut. Great movement from Esparza. And now Barnett's left cheekbone is already swelling. Esparza is having solid success mm -hmm. with that left hand counter. So it's a combination of Barnett's legs getting heavier. As you can see, she's moving a lot less now. And the punch production, the output, has decreased radically. Another three-punch combo. A series of them from Esparza, yep. ending with that left hand. And Marlon Esparza with another crisp round here in Flint. And as Farza is just getting into her comfort zone, walking into her own space, and obviously she's got her reach down, her distance down. Now Barnett's production is going low, her legs are getting heavier, and obviously the control ring generalship is now all Sparza's. Beautiful turn of the chin from Esparza. You have to wonder with Shelly Barnett, really her trainer, Yuan Jackson, you know what your fighter is. You know she's going to be standing where she will be standing. Nothing has really changed there no. throughout her career. In this day, how do you decipher, how do you draw that line where you know she's durable and she could take a lot of punches, but where, where do you, where's the line drawn there? Uh, defense. Then you work on defense and lateral movements. 
I mean, if you're not gonna up your pump produ punch production, then it, you you gotta save face because you cannot keep this tempo if you're trying to look for longevity in a sport like this. Esparza landed a fight high 28 punches in round number four. And she is busy with the hands here in the fifth. And she's doing whatever she wants with that left hand. Jab, hook. And then she sets up that cross right. Another left elevator. First to the body, then upstairs. Yes. That's a true testament to her Mexican roots. You go for the body, you go for the body. The head will fall all on its own. Esparza continuing to rock Barnett. Not too much action from Shelly Barnett. There she comes back with the two punch counter. And Ansel Stewart observing closely here in round five. And I wouldn't blame him because I'm getting so little reaction from Barnett that it, it's almost concerning. Can Esparza pick up her second pro knockout of her career? The Ansel Stewart looking in the eyes of Barnett, and now the peppering continues. Barnett getting laced with some discovered power from Esparza here in the fifth. She's sitting very pretty on that left cross. Another one that brings Barnett back, and a left hand behind the mitt from Esparza, getting it behind the guard of Barnett to close out the round. Beautiful. Beautifully closed this fifth round. And I would be, at this point in time, looking at what adjustment can you make. There's no way she's going to take this win mathematically. So she's going to have to look for that knockout. And in order to look for the knockout, she's got to let the hands go. They have not gone. Going to be an intriguing point here for that final round. If she could take it to another level, we, we, you know, we said it's tough to put Barnett down. It's, yes. it's tough to stop her. It hasn't been done as a pro, but it would certainly be an impressive feat. It doesn't have a record. Doesn't have the cachet that you would see from some of Esparza's other opponents, but we, as we, the title fight looms, it would be an awful nice way to wrap up a, a, a tune-up. Yeah, this is, and the ref went to the corner, Barnett's corner, and gave her a heads up. CompuBox count the last two rounds has Esparza out punching Barnett 59 to 16 in punches landed. But I've given every single round to Esparza. And Marlon Esparza determined here in round number six. And she's so loose. She's so loose. Up next, Jamie Mitchell, Noemi Vasquez, well, Marlon Esparza, one of three Olympic participants on this main card here on pay per view, opening up with a bang here against Shelly Barnett. And as you can see, Esparza has no respect for Barnett's power. Look at that jab, it's coming all the way from the hip. Beautiful looping right. On the move from Esparza. Yes. Look at that jab coming all the way from the hip. She's giving Barnett all the time in the world because she's not throwing. Hit, run, hit again from Marlon Esparza. As the time winds down here in the sixth and final round. I like the change in tempo on Esparza. We saw her come in guns blazing. She brought down the tempo, then brought it up again in the fourth. And she's closing beautifully, very calm, very composed. One-sided throughout. At least on our cards. Yes, see how the judges saw it from their 
few here at ringside, but Marlene Esparza, 2012 Olympic bronze medalist, doing some easy work here in Flint, Michigan, in her return to the ring. But this is exactly what she needed, especially if she's going to go for a title bout in April. When you've been out for such a long time, even though she fought in October, but she, like you said, she had to sit in that defeat against Anissa Estrada for a long time. So you need to get back into your groove and your confidence. Look at that cheekbone, left cheekbone on Barnett. I, I give Shelly all kinds of credit. She really doesn't have quit within her. She just goes forward. One direction, one speed. In your eyes, did Marlene Esparza accomplish everything she set out to do this evening? I think so. Uh, it, you know, away from not taking the win by a knockout, but she was not really looking for a knockout. She was looking for rounds. She was looking to get over the ring rust, lack of activity. Y you know, there was a lot of confidence. We saw that last round. She, she changed the tempo along the fight. She used every single tool beautifully, did damage, controlled the fight. What else do we need? Well-rounded for sure, Marlena Esparza. Looks like she'll be improving to nine and one. Let's get the particulars, the official word from Ray Flores in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, David DeYoung has it 60-54, and Cotillia Chambers and Pat Schmidt scored 60-53. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Marlena. Marlon, 